St. Minard is a particular place of peace, of prayer, of hope, of work that allows people to find God. We experience that peace in the beautiful surroundings of nature, in the monastic community, in the buildings that are here. As St. Benedict says, the monk comes to seek God, but we don't seek God by ourselves. We seek God with the help and support of the others. Prayer is the center of all that we do. We talk about aura et labora, prayer and work, and they're absolutely inseparable. We are ordinary people trying to do something extraordinary with our lives and trying to do that in a way that also serves the church and helps others. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. St. Minard is a place of beauty, of prayer, of work. It is our delight to offer you a little insight into what we are about. Welcome to St. Minor. Monasteries are known for being built on hills. And so, as the earth reaches up to heaven, we're reminded that this is a place where we seek God. St. Minard is a place where men who seek God as monks have come together to try to live according to the rule of St. Benedict, which has guided Benedictine communities for 1,500 years. It's a place where we undertake work for the church. It's a place where we are able to welcome visitors and offer hospitality. It's a place where we do our best to witness to the God who has called us to this place. One of the hallmarks of St. Margaret is that we are a community. We care about one another. We are involved in one another's lives. We are really a family of brothers living together in the same house. We have the monastic community, but we also have a sort of a bigger hill community, which includes uh, co-workers, students, faculty, uh, monks, and then there are guests, and there are always guests here. People seem to have this idea that if they're going to a monastery, they're going to find a lot of somber people walking around, and they get here and they discover that there's a joyful spirit, even sometimes a light spirit. The spirit receives divine substance from the one and hands it on to individual souls. <laughs> <laughs> But the basic idea is that we come here to seek God. And the way we do that is through prayer. And in the rule of Benedict, it says that is the primary focus of your life. Nothing else is to be preferred to it. Praise the servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the The liturgy, uh, the way we pray, uh, it's a very beautiful way of praying and it's something that I think people come for and uh, are impressed by and are moved by. It's really amazing the diversity. We have people coming in at age 21 we have people coming in at age 31, sometimes in their 40s and 50s. We have people who come in with wide backgrounds in education, medicine, law. We have people coming in that, you know, we would classify as white-collar workers, as, as blue-collar workers. The basic thing that unites us again is that desire in some way to seek God and to do it together and to do it while serving the church. The motto of the Benedictine order is work and prayer, ora et labora. And the two really have to go hand in hand. We think that it's important for each monk to work. And by work, I mean also kind of manual labor, work of the hands. But with that work has to go prayer. It is what actually gives rhythm to our day. And we pray a number of times together each day in the church. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself. There are certain rhythms that come from the works that we're engaged in because we run a school. So often nine months out of the year, we are engaged in intensive work that has a lot of activity on the hill at St. Minard. When school is not in session, the rhythm of the place eases up a bit. You know, there's this idea that somehow monks are 
living alone in an isolated retreat. And here at St. Minard, that's challenged for me all the time because the monks here are so involved through the school, through parish ministry. We have some monks who are away teaching at universities, and then of course we have lots of monks who are teaching here in our school. I think it's fair to say that among the monastic community, most of us would see the school as the primary work of our community from its origin. We also are engaged in educating and forming candidates for the permanent diaconate, and have been for a good number of decades now, educating and forming laymen and women for ministry in the church. We've sought to train ministers for the good of the church from the beginning, and it, it's part of who we are as a community. Plotinus is very interested in focusing on a kind of overview of that. A comment that we hear repeatedly from the students is that the first thing they learn here is that this is a place of prayer. And prayer is at the foundation, at the very heart of a priest's life. And so from the very beginning, we not only are telling our students how important it is to pray, and we're not only giving them techniques on how to pray this way or how to pray that way, but we're giving them the witness. They actually see a community of men who gather on a regular basis whose prayer means something to them, whose prayer brings them together. In the past century and a half, 13,000 men and women have come through these halls. They've influenced the lives of millions of men and women around the world. Another important reason why St. Meinrad was founded was the pastoral work here in southern Indiana, particularly at that time among the German-speaking Catholics. Primarily we serve the local church, the church that's kind of within driving distance around us. Um, and, and I think that's important that we exist for each other in the monastery, but we also exist for, for the larger church in, in the area. This particular monastic community has a special mission of supporting the diocesan priesthood. That makes us a bigger destination for retreatants, and uh, I think we attract a lot more people to the hill and people are interested in what's going on here. For a good number of years now, we have had a retreat program formally through our guest house. It is a way that we can respond to the hunger that people have for seeking God or for finding something in their life that they know is missing. We offer individual retreats. Then we also have retreats that are set up by theme. We might offer a retreat on Benedictine themes. They can participate in our prayer life here with us. And it's a way for them as well to discover um, some fellowship among the group itself. I think it's wonderful that we can invite other women and men to share in that work of the monks at St. Mine Red. And that's what the Albates are okay. invited to do. I do like the way you have put points at the main principles of the prep. Also, they volunteer in so many areas helping us at St. Mine Red. At the present time, we have a little over 1,200 Oblates throughout the United States. And it's women and men who want to offer themselves and do it by living Benedictine spirituality. And you know, you don't have to be Roman Catholic to be an Oblate. We have many others, Presbyterian, Baptist, Methodist. They want to deepen their relationship with God. They become rooted to the monks of St. Mindred. So many people who have been present for the funeral of a monk walk away very struck by, they might call it a starkness, we would say a simplicity of the way we approach death. People are particularly struck by the caskets in which the monks are buried. They have traditionally been made here in our carpenter shop by the monks. It occurred to us one day, this might be a way of sharing our monastic values. Abbey Caskets was born out of that. The reputation and use of the caskets has continued to grow. There are people out there who share our values 
and are happy to have that particular expression of monastic value for themselves. When you drive onto this campus, you're impressed by the beauty of the buildings, the beauty of the landscape, the peace that's here. Some people have even said, it, it, this is like heaven. Um, and it should be that. I mean, that is, that is what we're, we're striving for, not just in the physical reality of it, but in every aspect of our lives. The buildings are so substantial that they remind us of the permanence of Christ's presence here. And at the same time, the cemetery partway down the hill would remind us that everything we have here is passing into the heavens where life will be everything with God. Before and during and after the time of St. Benedict, monasteries were places of hospitality. There were no motels, no hotels. Monasteries were kind of citadels of safety for a lot of people and it was also some place to spend the night. Hospitality is very monastic, it's very Benedictine. Uh, St. Benedict reminds us that we should treat the guest as Christ. We have a wonderful guest house and retreat center and we have thousands of people come to visit. I think people come here generally and encounter a welcome. Uh, a welcome like they don't get everywhere else. And I think that's what draws them, and I think that's what draws them back.